Hey, hey, I, I personally want to want to thank you, Secure, for the opportunity today to uh, you know to be here. Appreciate the attendees as well. And so, so if, if you heard, if you remember in my in the opening comments, some of the areas that I've been focusing on is really around you know large scale encryption for our, some of our largest customers. That's in uh, DoD intelligence, uh, commercial Fortune 100s, and you know anything from one meg to 400 gig. And what's been really happening is. Uh, I'm starting to have a lot more discussions around, hey, how do we get started? How do we get going with, uh, you know, quantum, quantum safe capabilities with those commercial off-the-shelf encryption? And that's really what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you know, some of the, the, the requirements for getting there and starting this is so critical. Like, for example, U.S. government, you know, confidential, confidentiality there can last for decades. You know, I mean, the, the urgency is even higher for those folks. So really, it's all about starting the planning process. And there may be some of you out there that are saying, are you kidding me? I've been planning this for two, three years and outstanding if you're starting that. But it's really tough on us because it's so fluid how some of the standards with some of the ciphers we're looking at and some of the NIST standards are continuing to evolve. So what I would say is the first two bullets are really very, you know, organizational dependent. You know, what areas within the organization, organization do you want to start? What are at the most risk? I would evaluate where you want to start within your organization. But then I go to the third bullet, and it's really, you know, beginning that assessment. And I think one of the areas that I wanted to do for you is try to put some handles on this, specifically number four, which is really around, hey, how can, for example, Cisco and other vendors and, and how we're evolving help you? And, you know, some of the things I came up with early was, you know, just talking to some of my Cisco experts, some of those folks you may be aware of, uh, folks like Dave McGrew, who's an industry expert, Scott Fleur, who is doing a lot of our standards. So not only from a Cisco perspective, but, you know, contributions to the industry around this post-quantum error that we're moving into and trying to get the safe element of that. Some other areas which was relatively new to me um, were some of the digital signatures so we, as we get to post-quantum signing. Uh, Cisco has been implementing something called um, LDWM for a while, which is really the post follow-on to that is LMS that some of you may be familiar with. And that's really where, for example, NSA is moving towards for the 2025 compliance element. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things we're doing with commercial off-the-shelf encryption. Uh, some things around IPv2 and where we're mixing pre-shared keys, which is what we use today. It's very predominant in network encryption. And um, But the, the big one I wanted to hit, if you go to the next slide, Pat, is this protocol that we created, and it is within Cisco. It'll be interesting if, we're, if we take this to, to the standards body, which might, might not be a bad idea. But the idea with SCIP is, is this. It, what it does is, is really two things. It allows customers that are running commercial off-the-shelf encryption today to start looking at ways to leverage post-quantum security methods, right? So that would be one thing. And the, and the second thing, which I really love, is the ability for customers to leverage their existing commercial off-the-shelf encryption, like MACSEC or IPSEC, and start taking advantage of post-quantum security methods to secure those links. So what SCIP is, it's a protocol we, we will, anyone who's interested um, and has some kind of external key server, um, you know, we have a, a set of instructions, uh, APIs to actually create this. We use a form of Diffie-Hellman and I, I, uh, uh, I'm sorry, TLS 1.2 to make the SCIP communication protocol quantum safe. But it, again, it, it gives uh, the customers that capability to get started specifically when they're already running, you know, some form of network encryption. There's a link below there. It's a little small, but you guys will have access to that where you can dig a little deeper. If you go to the next slide, um, what I did was I did two use cases. And I wanted to share those with you because these are real. So any of you who are looking to say, hey, where can I get started? Can I get started today? Can I leverage my solutions today? This is a, a network design that I'm, I'm, I'm working with a lot of customers on. Think of this as like a continental U.S. design. Um, you see that it's very regional focused, leveraging regional co-location centers. Big reasons for that. 
is applications moving to the cloud. So this architecture caters very nicely to that as well as network or cloud delivered services. But the real key here is when we do this, when we do this inter-region connectivity, it's typically with 10 gig or 100 gig MACSEC. Well, leveraging this PPK capability, this, this you know, post-quantum pre-place key capability, and in this example, we're using it manually, or we would be putting the keys manually on the routers, but it gives me a quantum-resistant MACSEC session between these regions, where today I'm pretty much running, you know, standard base, COTS based MKA type, you know, keying with, with um, AS256 GCM. So I have the ability to create a quantum safe session between those regions. And this is available today, by the way, in some of our latest software on our iOS XR, you know, router platforms. If you go to the next slide, Pat, use case two is more in development and some work we're doing with QSecure and specifically the goal is to include Quirk in this. If you look at this diagram, you'll see that skip protocol highlighted as a communication future from Quirk, which will act as that key distribution platform for us to, to populate these post-quantum keys down into the routing elements. And then we would set up a quantum safe session, you know, to a destination where the apps live. So if you look at use case one, for example, Pretty straightforward using RFC 4, uh, 8784. It's just a, a mixing of pre shared keys with Ike version 2 extensions, which derivation wise provides us a quantum, a post quantum security session. Now, two things. Use case one, you can see that I'm actually extending that session from, say, a physical router on the left to a virtual router on the right. So we support. RF uh, 8784, this capability in our virtual routers as well. So we could extend that, for example, to AWS or Azure or GCP or some of the other cloud providers or even data centers. And then example number two is doing the same. I'm terminating in a co-location space into another router. And then from there, I can extend that into the cloud as well. I'm hoping in the future, as I talked about MaxSec on the last slide, I've been doing a lot of work with some of the customers extending their workloads into AWS and Azure via MaxSec, which is offered in 10 or 100 gig flavors. And I'm hoping, you know, maybe we start looking at that as well so we can create this full end-to-end -end capability. Now, use case number three, which is around QSL. Garrison hit this already. We just wanted to talk about it and let you see it in a, in a more enterprise architecture capability, whether it be over private link transport or the internet. You could, you could bring I, IoT into this mix over LoRaWAN. So there's a lot of capabilities you could do with Q everywhere, which is, I really like what Q Secure is doing there. But then we also want to try to start integrating Quark into the network encryption capabilities as I'm showing here. Um, so we're in early stages of development with them on Skip as well. So if you go to the next slide, just to, to, to wrap this up, Pat, and I, I think the key takeaways for me here are really, we talked about the when, which is we really don't know yet. But, you know, it's all about those threats and planning now. And everyone I talk to, I think it's, it's almost obvious that we need to start planning and start, you know, even challenging the vendors and saying, hey, how can we get there? And I think, as I mentioned in the third pillar here, you know, the ability to leverage open standard RFC 8784, things like SKIP. Um, there's some other things evolving similar to Skip and like Etsy, and the idea that I can leverage my in installation base and my commercial off-the-shelf encryption today to start moving and leverage some post-quantum capabilities in my network. And that's really the key takeaway here. And I, I think I'd, I'd leave this with just, you know, I love my early workings with QSecure. I love their innovation. Um, those of you who haven't seen what they're doing with or what they did with uh, Accenture, you know, extending a, uh, a, you know, a quantum safe session up to uh, different constellations for routers in space, or should I say communications up to the different constellations uh, capabilities at, at the LEO and, and GEO layer. And, uh, you know, that's a, 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 some of the work that they're doing there and some of the innovation that they're, they're showing is just really, really appealing to hopefully partnering with us at Cisco and helping you guys get to where we need to be.